I. I, John Abdullah Jinapo. Swear by Almighty God. Swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give before this committee. That the evidence I shall give before this committee. Touching the matter in issue. Touching the matter in issue. Shall be the truth. Shall be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. And nothing but the truth. So help me God. So help me God. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Honorable nominee, you are welcome. On behalf of this committee, I'd like to congratulate you on your nomination by His Excellency the President as Deputy Minister designate for the Ministry of Energy. Um, we will take you briefly through your CV, very brief, and then we go to the main meat of the matter. So Honorable uh, Haruna Idrisu will start the, TV, uh, the CV issue. Chairman, thank you very much. John Abu Jinapo, as you are affectionately called, can we refer you to page two of your CV? There is an updated CV for honorable members of this August committee, the one which has a summary with general background of his uh, profile. This one, Honorable Yilechire. Honorable Eric, we'll get copies for you through the chairman shortly. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Uh, 19, 1985 to 1990, are you suggesting that Complex International School was your primary school? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I do. Paragraph 3.0, are you still the spokesperson of His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama as you convey in that paragraph? Yes, I do. Do you find that in conflict with the statement made by the Minister of Information and Media Relations that he was in charge? I think that is right. Um, what I've always known is that the Minister of Information is in charge of general government communication, and all of us worked up to him. Uh, even before we won the election, the Minister of Information was in charge of government communication, and all of us worked up to him. And so if the Minister of Information did say that, I would agree with him that uh, that is true. Does that allow us to correct that part of your CV? Not necessarily. The fact that the president has a spokesperson uh, does not necessarily mean that the minister is not in charge. As I said, I heard you say that the minister said he is in charge. And I'm saying that if the minister did say that he is in charge, I do not see the conflict with that at all. He is indeed in charge because he is the head of the entire government communication machinery. I note that in the summary, you recognize the president as your mentor but you are hesitant to put his name even when you recognize him, whether as vice president or president of the republic. Is that deliberate? Uh, not at all. The president uh, has been a mentor to me even before he became vice president. Whilst he was an MP, I remember going to him and seeking counsel. And so maybe it would be difficult to specify with that it was only when he was a president or only when he was a vice president. He's always been a pillar, just like you have been uh, since I got to know you in my senior secondary school days. Honorable nominee, what I'm suggesting is you are hesitant in mentioning John Dramani Mahama. All you do is vice president, president, as he then was. Would you now want us, for the record, to state that you are referring to His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Precisely so. Mr. Chairman, okay, uh, there is only one president in this country. So when the, 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 the CV says that the president is his mentor, everybody knows, except those who are half presidents, who don't know who is the president. There's only one president in this country. So I don't, have, I don't see your problem at all. Uh, thank we you. All well, know well noted. Thank you. Chairman, my final question. What did you do with your life between 2004 and 2005? 
Uh, between 2004 and 2005, as the CV clearly uh, stated, I was working for a company, uh, basically as a research assistant uh, into Africa Investment Company Limited. And so if you would want to know what I was doing, that was my work between that time. Have you complied with your tax obligations to the Republic or m made satisfactory arrangements for that purpose? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can confirm to you that I have. And indeed, I have my tax clearance certificate. And if the committee so desire to have it, I would make it available. Thank you. Are you a registered voter? And where and which particular polling station did you cast your vote in the last presidential and parliamentary elections? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am a registered voter. I registered in the Yape Kosovo constituency. And specifically, my polling station is in Fufuso, where I voted in the last election. Do you owe allegiance to any other state other than the Republic of Ghana? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I do not. Yes, Honorable Baba Jamal, then Honorable Okujetu Ablako. Mr. Chairman, the nominee states that uh, he's from Bupe in the central Gunda district, in the north where I know. But he has a very unique hobby here, cooking. <laughs> cooking. And I know in the north when it comes to cooking, Predominantly, it is our women who do it. Is he challenging his wife in the kitchen? <laughs> and uh, what food specifically is he an expert in? I want to know. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think I took, from, I took after my father. Uh, my mother would confirm that on weekends, my father used to be of help. And so I might have taken after my father. What I do is that on weekends when I'm available, I do the cooking just to allow my wife to also rest. And for me to also have a feel of how our wives uh, work tirelessly towards providing us with food. Uh, if you care to know what I like most, I, I choose the easy options. I'm PC with steel and, and those that do not involve a lot of hard work. Yet, uh, and are you sure that if we confirm from your wife your cooking are tasty? If we should confirm from your wives? <laughs> I, I have no doubt my wife will give me a pass. <laughs> Honorable Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations to my good brother, John Abdullah Jinapo, a uh, young man I am very proud in. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, well, first of all, the nominee forgot to uh, number his pages, so if uh, he can take note of that. Uh, then the, the, the third page, uh, I noticed that he commits a mistake uh, many, many of us commit. Uh, Special Assistant and Spokesperson to His Excellency the Vice President, 2009 to 2012. It should be 2013 uh, because you continued in that position till midnight of 6 January uh, 2013 and you, cont you have even continued uh, to date. Then the next page, um, 2002 to 2003, you just indicate National Service Secretariat, Northern Region, Monitoring Evaluation Unit, and you, and you list your duties. Was that your national service? That was my national service. Okay. Uh, I hope we have your permission to state, uh, to amend that that was your national service. I'm done, Mr. Chairman. Yes, shall we move to the meat of the matter quickly? Who says the ball rolling? Okay, Honorable, no, Honorable Afeda Gwishi. Honorable nominee, uh, the chairman has already congratulated you. Um, of late, Thor has been in the news. Is either not producing or, or underproducing or it's not functioning at all or it should be closed down or it should be privatized? If you get a known, what will you do 
what suggestion will you bring on board with your minister to revamp <coughs> to? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. It is true that uh, TOR is having some challenges, but I believe that those challenges are not unsurmountable and can be dealt with. Uh, in the previous administration, a systems technical and financial audit was carried out to identify the real issues. In, in business, normally, before you tackle a problem, you conduct what you call a survey or a primary work to determine what the cause of the problem is. And I do know that a report has been written on that. I want to believe that as Deputy Minister, I'll be seized with all those facts. But as part of preparations for this vetting, I did some work just to determine what the problems are and what can be dealt with. The first problem is technical inefficiency with all. The machines are not operating efficiently. I'm told that the CDU, for instance, which is the crude distillation unit, can take as much as 60,000 uh, barrels per day. Presently, we're doing 45,000. In view of that, government uh, sought to revamp TOR and to make it more viable and turn it into a profit venture. And so government has already released $30 million to TOR. What is left is another $37 million. And with that, they will do what they call plant stabilization and profit enhancement program to ensure that TOR is efficient to ensure that in terms of even the fuel that is discharged and received, they automatically measure them and also put some um, equipment to monitor TOR, automatic equipment and cameras. When you do that, you would have then prevented TOR from bleeding. But as it stands, if you commit any resources there, because of the hemorrhage, you are still going to get problems. And so when you do all this and also ensure that in terms of the boilers, they no longer use fuel oil but use what would have been a residue from the gas to fire the boilers. You will be saving a lot of cost. And my information is that if we do that alone, with just this $67 million, we'll be saving more than $100 million a year. After that, then you give them some working capital to begin to work. Capi working capital is simply money that you turn around, get a fuel, sell, and turn around. And so if given the nod, I would push and support the minister to ensure that we release those monies immediately to put her in a very good position. But across the world now, there's a new phenomenon which I think we should look at. Uh, across the world, businesses are even giving shares to their employees so that employees feel part and parcel of the company. As a now, sometimes employees feel that their employees, they are demanding what they want. They think that the company is separate from them. But when you give employees shares in the company, they feel part and parcel of the company dealing with management, and also ensure that government settles its commitments. Because the more you delay, the more the debt keep piling up. And so I believe that with some of these few ideas that I have, I would be able to support the minister towards revamping, towards setting targets, and making it a profit-making venture. Thank you. Yes, Honorable Kujito Ablak. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I have two questions for the nominee. <coughs> The first one has to do with his experience as somebody who was in communications and responsible for the brand and the image of His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama since he was a running mate and became vice president and as president. One of the agencies under the ministry that you will be assisting your minister to head when we give you the nod is the ECG, the Electricity Company of Ghana. It will appear in recent times that their brand and their image has come under major attack. How will you use your branding skills and communication background to help the ECG? I have some evidence here. Uh, I'm sure you've seen this picture, social media, and electricity, electricity company of Ghana office using generator, uh, making the rounds. The ECG, the, the energy, the electricity provider itself doesn't have power. You've also seen this one, ECG branded light off, free ion, buy one, get one free. Uh, there's also this uh, generator with uh, hundreds of mobile phones there. Then 
uh, there's the SMS aspect, ECG, some people say is now either candle or generator. Uh, others say enemies of comfortable Ghana. Then there was this text message I received recently which read that, dear valued customer, if your light hasn't gone off today, it's an oversight. Kindly dial our emergency number 000 or text DUMSO to short code 506 for prompt response. ECG, dark and lovely. Clearly, the image of ECG is under, is under attack. I want to know whether that would be of concern to you and how you will intend to uh, assist the agency. My final question has to do with the ongoing debate about whether we should include nuclear energy in our current energy generation mix. Uh, what is your view about this debate? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, in as much as uh, this may look and sound humorous, I think that it brings to the fore the challenges confronting the nation. Uh, sometimes only ECG bears the brand, but it might interest you to know that sometimes the problem is not even from ECG. And so with your permission, I may answer the question in a holistic manner. The issue of power generation has to do with generating the power, evacuating and transmitting the power, and distributing it to the final consumer. And so it's not just about the final consumer. It's a mix. And you can't deal with one without looking at the other. So it's interdependent. Having said that, the current problem we are facing has to do with shortage of generation capacity. Ghana currently has a generation capacity of about 2,455. Our peak demand is 1,750. Under normal circumstances, this would have been enough. Well, Mr. Chairman, if you could add the, uh, the, the unit he's using, it's just mentioned. Megawatts, 2,455 megawatts. Uh, our current demand, peak period, is 1,750 megawatts. So we wouldn't have had a problem. But you and I do recall that we had a major problem with the West African gas pipeline. It knocked off Sinon Asogli, that she's supposed to produce about 200 and other units. And so that created a deficit, which resulted in the load shedding. Beyond this, government is working assiduously. And having worked with the president, I do know that the president is committed to the short-term solution, medium-term, and long-term solution. In the short term, we are working very well with the Nigerians to ensure that gas begins to flow through the pipe. And I'm reliably informed that all the works has been down. They are now passing a coagulant called PIC through the pipeline to clean it, and then gas will begin to come on board. In addition to that, we did commission the Takradi T3 project recently, which is bringing on board another 132 megawatts. BUI has just started simulation and test running, and that will bring another 132 megawatts. It's in view of all this that the president did say that we wouldn't have load shedding off peak hours, which is daytime. And so with all these programs coming on board, I'm comfortable that we'll deal with the challenge with respect to the current load shedding. But we are not resting. The president has indicated that by 2016, we should be able to ramp up our capacity to 5,000 megawatts. This is an ambitious policy, but we believe that it's attainable. And so president and government have begun to roll out some programs. One, we are going to construct a thermal plant to produce 450 megawatts at Domli. Another thermal plant is currently being worked on, the T2, which produces 220 megawatts. Following the improvements, they will get another 110. Sinon Asogli will bring on board 360. The Alstom power plant that they are constructing at Pung will bring another 550 megawatts. So we are looking at all this mix, and even not just thermal. We are looking at a system that does not depend on only one side. Well, we've had power shortages before as a result of water shortage. Now is gas. And so we're even introducing renewable energy. We're looking at the hang, hang water plant to do hydro, Pualugu, and the other uh, uh, programs that we are rolling on board. And with all this, some of which have started already with timelines, some are supposed to end in 2014, some 2016, by that time would have dealt with all this. But Mr. Chairman, with your permission, let me just add that Ghana is doing very, very well. I do know that we have challenges. But in the whole of sub-Saharan Africa, it may interest you to know that apart from South Africa, 
Ghana is number two in terms of generation and in terms of spread. When we started the National Electrification Program, we're doing only 15%. Today we are doing 72. Nigeria is doing 50%. Cote d'Ivoire is doing 43. Kenya, which is almost like Ghana in terms of economic might, is doing 30%. And so it's not as if we haven't done something. We are doing a lot and given the opportunity and the programs that the president is rolling out, I am confident that we'll deal with the short-term problems, we'll deal with the medium-term problems, and we'll deal with the long-term problems. And so we would continue to support the minister and push these programs aggressively. But these are projects that if you take your eye off, you're going to have serious challenges. And so given the opportunity, we'll do whatever we can to support the minister to push these programs so we can complete them on time. Thank you. The second? The second has to do with nuclear. Uh, you do recall, um, I do know that we've worked together and so we are, we are incromised. Uh, Osajifu in 1963 set up the Ghana Atomic Energy, ostensibly to look at uh, working towards getting nuclear power. Unfortunately, as a result of the overthrow, we couldn't achieve that. Uh, we have taken that up and we are looking at the possibility. In the world over, nuclear energy accounts for about 13% of the power generation that we have. Indeed, France, I'm told, when I was doing my research, accounts for 70% of the f energy requirement. And so there's a potential there. But the downside is that there's a risk element. The Chernobyl nuclear disaster and the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear disaster should also uh, prick our conscience. And the ministry is doing a lot. Uh, I did some investigation there, and I'm aware that already a nuclear unit has been set up under the Renewable Energy Directorate. In addition to that, we have already set up what they call NEPU. NEPU is the Nuclear Energy Program Implementation Organization, which was chaired by Honorable Yunus Afuseni. It's a requirement by the IEA, it's the Institute of Atomic Energy, IEA, to ensure that we are able to meet all the requisite standards. Because nuclear energy, though, can be cheap, the residue is radioactive. And if you don't handle it well, is terrible. That is why the International Atomic Energy uh, is ensuring that we meet all these requirements and we are on course and if given the opportunity, if not even in the immediate future, in the uh, future or in some years to come, we should be able to do that. And so we are giving attention to that and we can uh, assess that. A small correction by Dr. Oh, no. uh, uh, the International, it's International Atomic Energy Agency. Thank you. IAEA, just for the record. Thank you. Yes, uh, Honorable Harun Edri. The chairman, thank you very much. My is to congratulate our young colleague and to wish him very well in his new capacity as Deputy Minister for Energy. But chairman, to note that We've traveled the nook and cranny of this country, whether midnight or in daylight, with his very good superior, Babo or Bafuboni, trying to garner support for the president and the party. I have just one concern. Valco agreement. There is an agreement between the government of Ghana and the Volta Aluminium Company. Will you give an assurance to this committee that you will assist your minister to make copies of that agreement available to this committee and to the Parliament of Ghana. My final chairman is a very selfish one as Minister for Trade and Industry. That do you consider a possibility in the future that in terms of expanding the brilliant issues you expressed about enhancing Ghana's generation capacity, you will have dedicated network to assure industry of sustainable and reliable supply to energy. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. First of all, I thought that- but Honorable, Honorable Domini, before you answer the question, the double barrel question. In the area of making available <laughs> copies <laughs> of the VACO agreement, I wonder how you can do that. Because before this administration came into power, that agreement had been concluded. And yet, we are finding it tough getting copies 
of the agreement. I wonder how you're going to be able to work magic to be able to trace that kind of thing. But it's over to you. I, I, I thought Parliament was more powerful than I am in terms, of, in terms of assessing documents. In addition to that, I'm not the minister. I mean, there's a, a substantive minister, and we'll do as he directs. And so I'll raise it with him, Honourable. And uh, if we can, we'll do whatever we can to do that. Uh, VACO is true that they have a purchase agreement. And I do know that they pay a certain amount. But ultimately, I, I believe that VALCO can be made into a profit-making venture. As we speak now, VALCO is running on only one port line. If we have enough energy, VALCO can run on all five port lines. And with those five port lines, we can produce 200,000 metric tons of alumina per day at current market price of between 2,500 to 3,000 per ton. You are talking of about $500,000 per annum, almost equivalent to what we get from the oil industry. And so it's, it's possible to turn Valco around and make it profitable. And so we we'll look at that. You talked of industry, allocating energy specifically to industry. I, I do know that sometimes they do that. For instance, if you take the mines, I do know they have a bulk purchase agreement with VRE where they are giving direct energy. The challenge with Ghana is even how you locate industry. If you look at our generation mix, domestic consumption is almost at par with uh, uh, industry and commercial consumption. That is why even our peak hours is between 6 p.m. to 12 p.m. If you go to East Legon today, you have residents there, people are producing there, industries are located. And so we may have to work with you through our minister to ensure that we have designated places where you locate industry, give them not just the power, but the needed backbone in terms of transformers, in terms of transmission lines, so that you have adequate, reliable, and secured power to industry, and that can spare the growth. And so we'll be looking at all these challenges and um, various sector ministries working in collaboration to ensure that we deal with the challenge. Thank you. Chairman, just one follow-up. You spoke about increasing generation capacity. Jolly around the Bimbila uh, corridor there, and Palugu in the Upper East uh, region. Haven't spoken very well about Bui coming upstream. These are areas with demonstrable hydro uh, potential. Would you support your minister to make that a reality? Thank you. Thank you. I do know that the minister is already committed to this project. Indeed, we capture these projects under renewable energy. Presently, Ghana has only 0.01% of renewable energy as a component of the entire generation mix. And in the medium term, the minister and his team is looking at ramping it up to 10% so that you have a balance. And among these, you have Juale, you have Polugo and Hemang. Juale, we are working as a government with Togo to ensure that we jointly construct it and operate it. And that will give about 90 megawatts. Hemang is something that they are looking at. But for me, the most important is Pualugu. Pualugu provides the list. It gives only 50 megawatts. But if you look at what Bagri is doing, we can learn from them. Bagri Dam is not just for uh, hydroelectric power, but it's also for irrigation. It can irrigate about 40,000 hectares of land. My investigation is that so far they are doing only 4,000. And even out of that, we import tomatoes from Burkina. They produce 20,000 metric tons of rice. And so if we can commit ourselves towards ensuring that we put Polugu on stream, we can then work with SADA and ensure that the downstream, SADA irrigates a lot of farms. And it has a capacity of irrigating 100,000 hectares. That alone can feed that part of the country. But more importantly is the issue of flooding. Any time the Bagri Dam is released, it creates a lot of flooding, and we spend so much money on NADMO and other relief agencies. If we have the Pualugu Dam, what we do is that as they release, we collect it and also release it in a systematic order such that we don't disturb the environment. And so this is an issue I intend drawing the minister's attention to, and I believe together we can push these projects as quickly as we can, looking at the benefits we are getting, not just from the power it will produce, from the other ancillary services that we'll get as well. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Honorable Dr. Larson. 
Uh, well, my question was almost answered, but I just wanted to, with respect to Palogo, I just wanted to say that uh, would the Deputy Minister entrench this policy outlook of making hydro uh, generation and irrigation to be a matter of national policy so that whenever we are having opportunity to generate power and there's agricultural lands to benefit, it will be something that we should be looking up to. Uh, I also noticed that the nominee attended one of the best secondary schools in the country. Uh, and I, I appreciate you for that. Uh, I'm not surprised you are what you are. Uh, lastly, I found it very curious that a royal from Gonjaland can publicly admit that he's a good cook. Uh, you need to teach more of us a way of changing our behavior. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very it, it much. Uh, well, it, it wasn't a question as such, so you might just take note of it. Yes, Honorable Yelichere. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. The <clears throat> nominee talked about the generation mix and everything else. But recently, the president visited the, the gas infrastructure project. Um, and a more sustainable way of ensuring that if pirates again strike, we will continue to have reliable source of gas. What do you say about that project? Um, we have varying times that have been given for its completion. And the media like to put all the officials who are speaking against each other. What is your estimate of the time? Now, the other question I wanted really to ask, um, which is also very important, is that, you know, in the area of petroleum and petroleum products, some people think that now that we are producing oil ourselves, why should we be paying more or even have no refinery, refining our own? Do you have some matters to raise there? Thank you very much. I believe that with the second question, in the course of answering an earlier question, he addressed the issue. Am I right? Not completely. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'll try. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, gas for me is what will turn this economy around. The gas project is so essential and important that we just can't take our eye off the gas project. Um, as part of preparation for this vetting, I got to know that 7,000 cubic feet of gas is equivalent to one drum of oil in terms of firing the thermal plants. And that 7,000 uh, is about $28 to $30. A drum of oil is about 100 to 110 dollars, and so when you use gas, you're using just about 30 or a maximum of 40 percent of what you would have used crude for. And so we need gas like yesterday, because that will reduce the cost of producing electricity, and I'm told that it also enhances the efficiency of the machines and longevity. That is why I believe that uh, former President Mills uh, decided that we should invest heavily in that project. I have had the opportunity of visiting Atuabo with the president and the energy minister to inspect for ourselves work that is ongoing. We have been reliably informed that 45 kilometers of offshore pipeline has been laid and complete. It's complete. 70% of onshore, that is from Atuabo where the gas processing plant will be, to the thermal plants, which will be a thermal enclave, has been complete. And the form work to uh, take the processing plant itself is being prepared. And now these machines are coming in modular forms. And I'm told that modular form simply means that they come as prefabricated. And so when they come, we just do the installation and hook it on. And so that is important that we, we work on that. In terms of the time, on the average, it takes about three years. But because we want to aggressively pursue this, I guess that is why we're giving those timelines. I believe that is the ambition to do better than uh, the average or the standard practices being. And so people should not 
see it as a major problem. We are on course. We are reliably informed that the project will be completed by the end of this year. And we would have to give the minister and the team every support, including parliament, in terms of clearing the equipment from the harbor, ensuring that we deal with all the bottlenecks and install those machines. Because even the byproducts, LPG and other things that are associated with the processing of, of this gas, would turn this economy around. And so we would commit ourselves to it, work tirelessly, and ensure that we bring that project to fruition. The next one is petroleum and payment. And we're producing our own petroleum. Others have said that why don't you give our petrol to tour to process? Uh, I've heard some people say that our crude oil cannot be processed. My investigation is that that is not the case. I'm told that our crude oil is almost the same like uh, Nigeria, and I'm told it is light and sweet. I'm here to determine what that actually means. And so they can, but we shouldn't forget that we are bound by law. We decided that we'll pass an act called Petroleum Revenue Management Act in 2011. This act provides the framework for the collection, allocation, and management of all revenues accruing from petroleum in a sustainable manner. And so you just can't take crude as Jubilee Partners, maybe GNPC, and just give it to TOR. The law stipulates that when you sell the crude within 60 days, you must put all the money in the petroleum holding fund. That is the first thing. And then 70% of that goes to the ABFA. And out of that ABFA, 70% must go into infrastructure. So you just can't do what you want. The other 30% must go into the Heritage and Stabilization Fund. And so we are guarded by law. So if TOR can raise the ELSIS and buy and pay within that stipulated period at international market price, I think that we can look at that option. And so it's not as if it's so easy to, to just uh, do it and, and go about it, but you must follow the rules and the laws that uh, provide a framework for that. Honorable Baba Jama and then Honorable uh, Kupu. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, my brother, congratulations. Um, I call him my nephew because uh, we have some relationship. <laughs> I think that, um, to be honest with you, you are, you are discharging yourself very well, and I, I am really impressed. Maybe you, you are not the assessor. You are oh, not the assessor. I, I am, I'm just asking. I am questions. part of the panel, chief. <laughs> I'm part of the panel. <laughs> I'm part of the panel, so if I'm impressed, I must say. <laughs> I must say that um, your long association with the president, vice president, then now president, you have been the mouthpiece of the president. A lot of people know you. All the ministers have to call you for information. You had a serious clout. Now you are going to a ministry and you are going to work under a minister. You were working directly with the president. Now you're going to work with a minister. Are you, how do you feel? Are you going to, how safe is your, 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 your boss himself? Because if you go there with your huge clout, what will happen? How are you going to relate with your boss and your colleague who will be your this? And that is my, I want you to clear. I know you, your humble self, but it's important you clear that aspect. But then let me also say that when it, just recently it was in the media, this PURC, the regulatory body, the electricity companies and co were asking for price increase to help them uh, deliver better. It's always been the, the case. We want to deliver better. I want you to share your ideas. You are going to a ministry. How are you going to support your minister to deal with that? And then finally, you have answered the issue on, on VACO. But as far as I know, I know VACO is making a lot of losses now. What is your ideas? How are you going to, what will you prefer to your uh, minister to, to revamp VACO? Especially when you have uh, assumed your position. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you very much, Honorable Nominee. Mr. Chairman, with your permission, I'll just take the VALCO quickly. It is true, VALCO 
if you operate in one port line, you have in economics what you call economies of scale. It simply means that it's difficult. But if Valco were operating on all four, five port lines, I'm sure that they will be profitable. Because Valco alone can generate direct employment, 15,000. Indirect, 55,000. And if you have an integrated alumina industry, I can assure you that it's, it's good. But as I said, we need to support them and turn it around and deal with the other issues accompanying Valco. Um, having worked with the president, there's one thing I've learned, that is humility and discipline. And throughout my career, I have been guided by this. I've come to realize that political power is transient, it's not permanent. And so all the time I'm reminded by the fact that I must not allow political power to eat into my head. And so as you said, I've tried my very best to be humble and to be respectful. And that is what I'm carrying to the ministry, to support the minister and recognize that he is the minister. He is the arrowhead. What we have to do is to help him succeed. If he succeeds, all of us succeed. And so I can assure you, I am not going to do anything to undermine the minister. In addition to that, the president abhors in discipline. The president is somebody who believes in discipline, respect, and commitment to duty. And so there are no fears at all. I'm even grateful to the minister. Indeed, the minister prepared me adequately for this vetting, and I'm grateful to him for that. It's already uh, there's that chemistry existing, and I'm sure we'll have a symbiotic relationship moving forward in supporting him. And so that is what I can say, honorable member. PURC and tariffs is a double-edged sword. Uh, the utility companies ask for increase in tariffs. PURC is saying, improve your services before. And the utilities are saying that we need the money to improve the service. I heard the boss of Valco say that they spend $3 million daily to fire the thermal plants. Three times, three, three times 30 gives you $90 million a month. And times 12 would give you about $1.80 billion to fire the thermal plants. And so that is huge sums involved. And so if you were to ask me, I would say that let's do a constructive debate on how we want to tackle our energy moving forward and realize that energy is no more cheap. If you look across the sub-region, Burkina Faso and the other countries, they pay 25 US cents per energy consumed. Ghana pay eight. Liberia pay, I think, 43, if, if I got my statistics right. And so it will appear that even though our energy situation is quite better than most of these countries, we pay the least. I must concede that sometimes thermal generation and all that are infused in determining the price. But I think that we must take the bull by the horn. As a nation, we must set standards for the utilities. That is very important. They must bring efficiency and improve the services they provide. And indeed, a lot of work is going on. If I tell you the amount, if there's power off this way, you can have a reverse power. I mean, a lot is going on. But the energy situation is such that you don't see the benefits immediately. But if we can progressively resource them, stabilize the system, and provide them with some targets and some levels of improvement in terms of even revenue collection. Because ECG, I'm told from across, makes uh, about 30% losses in ATC and C, which is the aggregate technical, commercial, and collective losses. ECG has a customer base of 2.55 million. Only 30% of those are hooked onto meters. The minister did say here when he met your honorable members that we needed to roll out 50,000 meters. We must do that immediately. And these are smart meters, you can tamper with them. And also put meters on bulk supply points. So that if we know that 100 megawatts went into it, at the end of the month, we compare with the individual meters that were supplied. And if we realize that there's a huge gap, we can zero down because that means that some illegal connections are going on. So these are some of the few ideas that we ought to be looking at and supporting the minister with and dealing with that. Another major problem is the M MMDs, the ministries and departments. There's a huge debt. I'm told it's about 500 million. That is a lot. The president has given directive that we should supply them with all, all of them with meters. And you need about 2,032 meters to supply them. We must do that immediately. Because these things, when you do them, the long-term benefit far outweigh the initial inflows that we put in. And so as a nation, let's take the bull by the horn and realize that we must make the right choices, improve power, 
so that tomorrow we don't come back experiencing the power outages that we are having. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, Honorable Eric Opoku, the last one. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, the first question has to do with TOR. The Honorable Nominee, while responding to a question posed by Honorable Ashama, spoke about the fact that uh, TOR is being rehabilitated. But I would like to take him you to... You mean Honorable Member for Ashama? Yes. Yes, but that's not his name. Ashama is not his name. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, Honorable Member for Ashama. Mr. Chairman. Correct. Chairman, there is a member for Boim called Honorable Ashama. That is his real name. But if you call Honorable Ashama, you may not be referring to Honorable Member from Boim. So let us make the distinction. Mr. Chairman, I'm referring to the one on the right hand of Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, uh, the question is about the debt position of TOR as we speak now. You know, it has been in the news for a long time. And it looks as if now uh, it is going down. Let's understand what is the debt position of TOR as we speak now. That is number one, if you, you, you are aware of. Then number two. I was told that uh, when Honorable Haruna Idrusu was the youth organizer of the NDC, he met you somewhere and saw the unique talent that you have, your eloquence and supersonic brains, and your ability to adapt to changes and to offer constructive suggestions. As a result, Honorable Haruna recommended you to now the president, President John Dramani Mahama. And uh, you have been a big man in our system. Honorable member, yeah. honorable yeah. member, if you care to know, honorable Haruna taught the honorable nominee. Let, let yes. me make my point. He will know. He will know. We want to know. He will answer. Now, honorable Haruna created the opportunity I'm told for you to be where you are today. As a young politician, would you also do the same for other hidden talents that are not known to the people of this country? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Honorable Member. Mr. Chairman, the debt position of TOR uh, has to be given on authority. I'm not the Deputy Minister yet. And should you find it appropriate to approve my nomination? I believe that when Parliament requests for that, would give you a definitive figure on authority. I must confess that most of the work I've done now is in preparation for my vetting. Uh, if I'm approved, I would then be demanding information on authority, and I can state clearly. I have some figures, but with your permission, may I refrain from bundling figures that can turn out to be inaccurate. <laughs> uh, the other issue is Honorable Haruna. It's true, Honorable Haruna has been a pillar. He's been a mentor, and he's been an inspiration to me. Indeed, I fell in love with him the very first day he came to my class to, to teach. Mr. Chairman. <laughs> not not, not Mr. In, Chairman. In, in, in the sense of. Mr. Chairman, this is a serious. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I, you need to be careful I, about I, your I, choice I, of words. I had no admirations for him. Precisely. In terms of his talent, his composure, and his eloquence, and I must confess that I do know Honorable Haruna has not mentored only myself, but quite some youthful ones. I'm also grateful to Honorable Kujito. I remember in 2008, I really wanted to be part of the campaign, and sometimes it's difficult, especially when you have a brother in another party. Kujito pulled me with Dr. Mane, and we worked together. In addition to that, uh, Mr. Bafoboni has been an inspiration. I mean... I can't express my, my appreciation to him. But above all, he's the president. President Mahama okay, is mentored Okay, okay, I think it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. Um, honorable, honorable members, I think that um, we would like to recognize the presence of a few dignitaries here. We have the secretary to cabinet in the person of Mr. Ruja Asungwini here with us. Thank you very much. We have Mrs. Josephine Jinapo. That's a better half of the nominee. Thank you. We have Mrs. Alice uh, Jinapo, the mother of the nominee. 
Thank you very much. We have Dr. Ahmed and Joyce Jinapo, brother and sister. And then we also have uh, Waspe Wura Mumuni, the paramount chief of the Daboya um, and representing Yabon Wura, overlord of Gonjaland. We also have uh, Tolade Wura, is that correct? Paramount chief of Tolowo. Uh, it's Tolowo Wura. Tolowo Wura. Then Kusaugu Wura. Kusaugu Wura. Paramount chief of Kusaugu. And the chief linguist of Yabon Wura, Al Haji Afuli. We also have the chief director of the Ministry of Energy here with us. Thank you. We have uh, Pandum Wura, representing Bwipi Wura, Jina Po II, father of the nominee. We also have Soru Wura, representing Mangpang Wura. Right. Alhaji Sofo Azoka, regional oh. chairman, NDC. Yeah. <laughs> Adam Zawura Idrusu, constituency chairman, Yapi Kusopu, Kusogu. Honorable George De Mapo, Constituency Secretary, Yapi Kusogu. Mr. Bafuboni is also here, Office of the President, with his mustache. And Honorable, <laughs> Honorable Swalisu Bea Wurbe, the DCE, Central Gonja. Thank you very much for being here with us. Honorable nominee, we thank you for attending upon this committee. You are discharged. Honourable members, we'll go on a short break.